Hey everybody, gonna take a look at some of my correspondence games today. I uh, normally play about four to five games at the same time. I try not to spread myself too thin when I'm playing correspondence games. A uh, main reason is because I start to move too fast. I start to get hurried. In some of these correspondence games, I like to really take my time. Sometimes I'll print out the positions and go and write down variations and things like that. Uh, whenever I'm stuck somewhere for a long time, I can pull out a uh, correspondence position and study it doesn't happen as much as it used to, and oftentimes I end up making a move in just a couple of minutes, or, or even sooner sometimes, and the sooner part has led to me losing a few games. Uh, so I try to combat that as much as I can, and I don't, I don't always succeed. So I'm just going to run through, I think I have four games going on right now. This one's against a lower rated player. Um, I just want to take a look at it real quick. So it's some one of these weird French defenses where they advance e5 before uh, ever playing d4 which I'm never really sure what to do about. Here I trade off my light square bishop, uh, which is always a problem in the French, so I'm happy to change it, exchange it. Um, I'm looking at maybe piling up on e5 at this point, and here I prevent him from playing d4 to support e5, which, you know, theoretically will make it a weak point at some point in the future, and he overprotects. Now, um, his pieces are going to flow to the king side over here, so I decide to castle queen side. Hopefully it's not a mistake. I'd like to slide my king over to b8 at some point. It makes me a little uncomfortable with that dark square bishop being on that diagonal, but I don't think his e5 pawn is going anywhere, and I don't think I'm going to be able to capture it anytime soon. Um, once everything has kind of died down, and especially if I can trade off a knight for that dark square bishop or uh, something like that, then I will likely play something like f6, something like that. Um, I believe I've... well, let's go ahead and go forward. Yeah, at this point I'm preparing for my knight to come to either f5 or d5. And this is an interesting move. He has two squares he's looking at for his, um, his knight here. Both of them I don't like. This one is going to be a pretty, pretty firm outpost square because I'm not likely to play b5 with my king safety being an issue already. Uh, so probably a good spot there at c4. I don't have a light square bishop to, to combat any of this. And he can also come to, to, to b5 to really cause some havoc, especially right now it would fork the queen and the a7 pawn, meaning I would need to play something like uh, queen b6 or queen b8, neither of which I really want to do, especially queen b8. Uh, so that's where I'm at in this game. I'm considering things like uh, playing knight d5, forcing him to do that, bringing my knight to a good square, although I looked at a variation, uh, I'm not on my analysis board, but anyway, I looked at a variation with uh, c4, where I would take on, pos on passant, and I didn't really like the, the way it turned out, so, whoops, sorry, um, I'm also looking at things like a6 to keep him out of b b5, uh, so I'm not really sure what to do on this one, this is the only game where it's my move currently. I'm going to move on to the next game. Uh, oh, and I don't have any ready yet, so it brings me back to this main screen. All right, here we go. Game number two, it is not my move on this one. This one uh, had an interesting little pawn battle going on on the queen side here lately. Now here I decided... Well, quite frankly, I, I was really happy to have my good bishop against his bad bishop in this uh, after coming out of this opening but his bad bishop seems to be almost better than my good bishop my, my good bishop has no scope here his is dominating a very powerful diagonal here it's outside of his pawn chain which means it's active um, I can't come to h5 with my knight to trade it off because the queen's guarding that I don't want to weaken my dark squares around here to support that kind of a move with g g6 it's just a good position for him uh, his knight is is kind of centrally almost centrally located, controlling some center squares, combating mine. Uh, he's got his queenside pawns rolling pretty well here. His rooks are poised to come into the open files. It's just, I think his position is better than mine here. Uh, but I don't think mine is bad yet. So um, after doing some, some looking around, this was the best line I could come out with. And uh, it gives me a backwards pawn on c6, unfortunately. So here's where I'm at. I'm hoping that maybe I can get some activity along here at some point. You know, maybe if I if I brought the queen to to b4 or something, I'm not really sure what I would do. Uh, but there are some 
some things along those lines that I was looking at. So this move or this game, I'm not really thrilled with my position, but it also isn't terrible yet. It could get that way though. So moving on here, next game. Oh, it's brought me back to this. Okay, I need to go back to the main screen. Let's do that. Sorry. I'll go to game number three on my list, which is against a fairly even, uh, evenly rated opponent with me, within two points of me, actually. Uh, this is, I believe this was a Sicilian. It looks like one. Let me, yeah, Sicilian, and then I go open Sicilian. And I th is this a, a dragon variation? I'm not positive. I get a little confused sometimes. Uh, so I played bishop e2. He's got some some attack here on d4. He's likely to, pay, uh, to play knight f6 next. At some point I'm likely to play knight b3. I'm likely to, to move queen d2, castle either way. Like him to commit to castling uh, kingside. I might take on c6. The problem with taking on c6 is if I'm going to castle queenside, if he plays b takes c6, then he's going to have the b file to attack my castled position, but having that knight over here at knight b3, uh, which I wouldn't have if I took that, would I? But uh, planting a knight here anyway would, would prevent any any of that, so I can't have it both ways there. Um, I'm likely to play things like f, f3 can be a good waiting move while I wait for him to commit to castling on one side, so here's where this game is uh, still early on in the opening. And my last game I'm looking at here. Oh, this was an interesting tactic. I think I come out fairly well on this. Let me bring an analysis board forward here. Uh, I'll have to center this up about right here. There we go. Uh, so let's back up a few moves here. All right, so I place my rook on the d1 square here, and I'm lining it up with the queen knowing that this is all about to open up. If I decide to take d, d takes e5 here, um, I can be in pretty good shape. He's, if he recaptures d6 takes e5, then I can take on e5 with my knight. Here, let's just show. <laughs> Wait a minute, which move? Who's moved? Okay. I come forward here. There we go. So if I take, he takes. Now I can take here, and he can't recapture because his uh, knight is pinned to the queen. So we could come out with this variation here. Um, probably best to go here. And then I'm going to have to deal with this by maybe shutting off that that open file or coming back to b3. Probably just this will show the, uh, the position. So I basically have his queen for, what, a rook and a minor piece? Which I think is pretty good. Oh, and a pawn. All right, so let's back up. So instead of doing that, he, he sees it and comes up with, uh, let's go here. He sees it. After I take uh, d takes e5, he sees it and instead jumps on my uh, e4 pawn. And the problem here for me is that I if I take it, he forks. And so he wins a pawn. Um, I can't, like say I did this. And then I can't recapture it here, so we're looking at this. And then he's threatening to support this kind of a fork coming up. So there's some issues here. We're even material here. Uh, no, I actually come out a pawn ahead either way, I think. But he, he's got an isolated pawn here that's going to be kind of weak. And this pawn might be a little overextended, but his bishop's going to be pretty strong. He's got two bishops here in the center is going to be open. So uh, this isn't the greatest thing. But that's where his uh, knight takes e4 move comes from. However, I looked and if I can get something for that, sorry, if I get something for this bishop before it can be forked like this and kind of crack this open, uh, let's see what happens here. And then I can take this without worrying about being forked. Um, seems like there's something really wrong with this. Maybe it's this. I don't think that's it. There was something else really wrong with that. Uh, trying to come up with it on the spot might be difficult. Um, hmm. Oh, this, I think. 
Yeah, I think I discovered that this is bad. Obviously, he has to deal with this problem right now, because if he decides, oh, I'm going to get a piece for that, I've got check here, and he has to deal with that, and then I can move to safety. You know, something like this. So I would come out of this ahead. Uh, so he needs to deal with that right now, and I could do something like this. I could do here. Even here, we have... Uh, well, I can't quite... This is probably good. So now he, I've... Not only am I, I believe... Let's see... He's got two bishops, though. That's pretty good. So he's going to have some trouble holding on to this pawn, probably. I've got this pawn fairly well supported. I don't think I'm going to be able to hold it up there. Uh, but this, this looks pretty dangerous for him. I've got this open diagonal here for my queen to come in. Uh, things like that. So that's what I'm looking at there. I believe that was my last game. Let me double check to make sure. This is where I'm at on this. Uh, this is the current position, meaning he's definitely going to do this. So I've got the option of, of forking next move and coming up with the position I just showed you. All right, so was that my last game? I think I've gone through all of them. Yeah, so that's where I'm at in my correspondence games. Do do do, And uh, let's see, that's weird. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, but uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to keep updating on some of these games. I'll come back to about where we were, and, and I'm not going to show, show these every day, but I'll show them from time to time just to give you an idea where I'm at. Uh, if you're curious, my current rating on Chess.com's Correspondence Games is 1749. All right, we'll talk.